Hello and welcome. In this session, we're going to focus on the connection between stress, your hormones, and your gut. And we're going to give you a guided experience. So it's not just going to be the sciencey things, but it's going to be something that you can feel and experience and learn the skill in your journey towards optimal health and wellness. My name is Dr. Biara Harashi, and let's go ahead and jump in. All right. So this session is part of the Women's Hormone and Health Summit. And so a question you may be asking yourself is, is this presentation right for me? And so, yes, it is if one of three things apply. One is if you have ever experienced stress in your life, are currently experiencing stress, or anticipate that you may experience stress in the future. And this may be all kinds of stress. It may be physical stress as far as working out really hard, doing heavy labor. It may be emotional stress as far as having unpleasant um, or uncomfortable emotions coming up. It may be time stress. It may be relationship stress. It may be work and career stress, deadline stress, etc. Hormones. So all of us have, have hormones. So that applies for you as well in a gut, which is your digestive system, your gastrointestinal system. So this applies to you. This is also for women of all ages. So this goes from the whole range. So even young women who are maybe just entering puberty um, and maybe are in their teenage years, this is absolutely important um, for them to know about. It's something that I wish I knew about back then. And if you have anyone in your life that would benefit from this, please send this to them as well. So young women, um, childbearing age women. So those of us who maybe um, in that childbearing age, maybe trying to conceive, maybe pregnant, breastfeeding, or postpartum. That is one of my subspecialties. So this applies to you as well. And this also applies to women who are past childbearing age, who are getting towards menopause, maybe in menopause, and even beyond as well. So this presentation is for all women. And I wanted to start with an experience. And then we can jump into the sciencey stuff and all the explanation. But I really want to experience, have you experience what this feels like. And so today I wanted to guide us through a guided meditation, some nervous system regulation work and energy work. This is a combination technique that I use along with many others. And what this does is it allows us to, when we're in those stressful moments, it gives us a skill and a tool where we can start regulating our response to our stress. So I invite you, if you feel comfortable to, to put one hand over your heart and one hand on your belly, over your belly button or so. And a thing I want to mention is if you do, don't have time right now to really focus and do this, it's only going to be a few minutes. If you don't, please come back and watch it another time. You can just listen along as well if you're doing something else. And I do encourage you to take, it's probably going to be three minutes total, maybe four minutes to go ahead and sit down and do this practice when you have the time, if not right now. So again, I invite you to put one hand on your heart, one hand on your belly button, close your eyes if you feel called to do so. Sit back into the chair or couch or bed, wherever you're sitting and listening right now. And I just want you to pay attention to the movements of your hands, your top hand versus your bottom hand. And so as we're breathing, our lungs expand in different ways and our diaphragm may be expanding as well. So you may feel the air coming in and out at your bottom hand, your top hand, or a combination of both. And I just want you to have awareness, no judgment at all. And if you are experiencing any stress right now, I would like you to just think about it for a moment and go ahead and rate it from a scale of zero to 10 as far as how distressing that stress is right now. Zero is no stress at all. 10 is a lot of stress. Again, no judgment, just awareness. And you're just gonna remember that number. And what we're going to do now is we're going to shift the focus to knowing that right now, right here, right in this moment, there's nothing more important for you to do. There's nowhere else that you need to be. There's nothing else that you need to think about. 
except being right here present in this moment with yourself. Feeling that air coming in and out of your body, the movements of your hands over your heart and your chest and your belly. Being very present with yourself. What we're going to do now is we're going to do something called a mindful breath. And what that is, is I invite you to breathe in through the nose into the belly, nice and slowly. And exhale through the mouth, nice and long. And again, in through the nose and into the belly. And out through the mouth, nice and long. One more, in through the nose and into the belly. And on the exhale, I want you to feel your body dropping down into the chair even more. If your shoulders were tense at all, you'll feel them drop down. You'll feel your body get heavier. You can feel the contact more with your back and your butt and your legs with whatever you're sitting on. And you can feel yourself getting nice and heavy, allowing your chair or bed or couch to fully support you. And I also want you to feel your, the bottoms of your feet firmly planted on a surface, whether it is the floor or the bed or the couch. I want you to feel them firmly planted down. And I invite you to envision roots coming from the bottom of your spine and even the bottom of your feet down towards the center of the earth. This can also be a beam of light. It can be energy, however you'd like to think of it. And these roots or light or energy are going to start moving down through the floorboards of whatever building you're in. If you're on a second level or a first level, they're going to go down to the next level underneath, down to any basement, down through the crust of the earth, and they're going to go down and down and down. Down and down and down towards the center of the earth. As you allow those roots and light to go down, you feel your body relaxing and getting even heavier knowing that you are safe and supported right here in this moment. And as they're going down and down and down, when you're ready, you can start making contact with the center of the earth and know that Mother Earth is holding you as well and supporting you. Now that we are grounded and centered and held and supported, I invite you to envision a light coming from the top of your head, reaching up into the heavens. A connection with whatever divine power or higher power that you believe in. Knowing that we are supported and held. And this allows for the sensation of grounding and expansion to opportunity and possibilities. And again, I'm gonna bring you back to the breath, to those arms, to your hands, on your chest, and over your heart and on your belly. And just pay attention to how you're breathing again. Where do you feel the movement? No judgment. Just awareness and mindfulness. And we're going to take one more mindful breath in through the nose, into the belly. And a nice long breath out through the mouth. When you're ready, I invite you to open your eyes. And come on back when you're ready there.
So how are you feeling right now? Do you feel this calmness? I feel like waves of calmness coming over me. I feel supported. I feel held. At the same time, I feel confident, optimistic. And how amazing would it be to continue feeling this way and be able to call upon it at any time? What if you could anchor this feeling into your state of being? So this is a technique and a practice that you can do on your own at any moment, at any time. If you get this replay, you can also listen to this at any moment as well. And you can do this practice on your own. So let's talk about what happened from a hormone perspective. What we did is, and actually from a nervous system perspective, from a nervous system perspective, when we are on the go and we're feeling stressors, that is something that is often called fight or flight or freeze or fawn, which we'll go into a little bit later. But essentially the sympathetic part of your autonomic nervous system is working. There are certain hormones that are being secreted, such as cortisol, the stress hormone, maybe even adrenaline. If it's something big that's coming up, a car accident, or, you know, if you think about back in, in caveman times, there was a tiger hiding behind the tree or the bush, right? Those hormones are coursing through our blood, through our body. By doing this practice, they actually switch into something called the parasympathetic nervous system state. Different hormones are secreted. And in this state, it's called the rest and digest state. We become present. We allow our body time to heal and then the supports for it to heal. Digestion becomes optimized, etc. So in this practice, in just a few minutes, we're totally shifting our hormones that are circulating through our body. We're regulating our nervous system into the parasympathetic state. And from a gut and digestive perspective, we're allowing digestion to occur and we're actually supporting our gut and our gut flora. We'll talk about that in a moment as well. So this practice is super powerful and I encourage you to practice it. And the more you do it, it really does become anchored into your being. And you can call upon this at any moment, especially during stressful times and situations. So I wanted to introduce myself some more. My name is Dr. Beata Harashim, and I'm a holistic and integrative doctor. And I partner with ambitious and purpose-driven individuals who are ready to get to the root of their health and wellness challenges. They aspire to amplify their energy and vitality, and they want to have a profound and aligned impact on the world and also enjoy the fruits of their labor. And I do this by something called the Radiant Health Protocol. This was developed through my own experiences and my own healing journey. And there are five pillars that we focus on, nutrition, gut health, emotional energetics, nervous system regulation, and decoding your body's language. So you just got a taste, especially of the emotional energetic and nervous system regulation piece there. And we're going to dive into some of these other components next. So when we look at stressors, there's different types of stressors and there's different types of stress responses. So this figure is from a book that is called the Medical Student Wellbeing Guide or book. And I find this very ironic because those of us in health professions actually need this work the most. And not just health professions, but also entrepreneurs, business owners, um, executives, Anyone who has a lot of deadlines, this also goes for moms. This also goes, you know, especially with young kids. Um, this is so important for many people, but this book has been a large source of uh, my resources for these next couple slides. And so the chart here comes from that book and it kind of goes through some of the steps. And so when we look at what is stress, right? It can be physical, it can be emotional, it can be mental. And it's any actual or potential disturbance of an individual's environment due to real or perceived noxious stimuli. So it can be something like realizing you didn't pay a bill and it's late. It can be something, you know, like a car accident, something that's right in front of you or a tiger jumping out from the woods um, behind the bush. Or it can be your child having a meltdown. 
Um, it can be a deadline that's upcoming for a project. It can be so many different things. And so essentially your prefrontal cortex communicates to your amygdala and you have this perception of fear or a threat, the stressor. And then your body creates a stress response. This is via the HPA axis, which is the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis and the autonomic nervous system. So the autonomic nervous system, we just talked about those two branches, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. And what happens is it removes the vagal nerve inhibition on something called the SA node, which is in your heart, and that increases your heart rate. So oftentimes, you know, how does our body respond? We have a racing heart, our blood pressure goes up. Um, we'll go more into the physiologic pieces of that. And then what normally happens is after a stressor, we have recovery after removal of the stressor. And so what happens is sometimes we don't have recovery. And that's what we're going to be going through in this presentation as well. The right side has more focusing on that autonomic network, um, the vagus nerve, GABA neurons, et cetera. But the left part of that um, really shows the, the steps of it. So again, the important thing to get out of this is the autonomic nervous system regulates the stress response um, in addition with the HPA axis. So again, there are different kinds of stressors as well. We can go into acute versus chronic. So acute means things that are happening in the moment. So daily stressors, maybe a trauma, they're short-lived. And again, the system, I'm sorry, so the sympathetic nervous system is stimulated. A lot of S's there. So we often call this the fight or flee, fight or flight response, but it's also can be fight, flight, freeze or fawn. So there's just different responses, essentially survival responses. So fight is you're getting ready to fight that tiger. Flight is you're getting ready to flee or run away from that tiger. Freeze is you're going to freeze and pretend like you're dead. And then fawn is you're going to try and feed the tiger and be really nice to the tiger and um, hopefully win it over so it doesn't eat you. The same response has been hired, hardwired into us. And although many of us are not being um, encountered with tigers nowadays, all of our daily stressors, we react to those, the stress response in one of those four ways. So again, with an acute stressor, you know, something pops up, ideally we want a quick recovery, and then we go back into that parasympathetic state, the rest and digest state. And again, the parasympathetic oh, parasympathetic nervous system allows us to relax, conserve energy, heal. It's the healing state. It allows for appropriate digestion, detoxification, immunity, sexual arousal, all very good and important things. And this is also to say that that sympathetic nervous system is equally as important because we do need to respond to stressors. The key is maintaining a balance where we can recover from a stressor and get back into the parasympathetic state quickly. Now, chronic stressors are things that are ongoing. So things that, you know, have you ever experienced a time where it's just like one thing pops up after the other, you don't get a chance to catch your breath. This is also um, associated with something called childhood developmental trauma or the ACEs study. If you aren't familiar with that, I highly recommend you look into that. But essentially, sometimes we, there are those of us who grow up with constant stressors in our lives. And that actually plays out in our health going forward in the future as well. And one of a big piece of my work as well. And these chronic stressors, when your body doesn't get the chance to get back into rest and digest, have a really profound impact on health. And so again, when we talk about the stress response, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis and the autonomic nervous system regulate this. So some of the physiologic changes we've already talked about are heart rate, blood pressure, blood flow to muscles, fight or flight. Now, this is the connection to your hormones. Cortisol, other stress and other stress hormones are released. What these stress hormones do is, again, they're important for that stress response. And at the same time, they decrease digestion, they decrease your immune function, um, they don't allow for inflammation, and they change the hormone balance. Because in that moment, digestion and your immune system is not important if you're not going to be around very long when that tiger eats you. So that's why it's important that these stress hormones are released. Now, again, when we regulate and when we can go back into the parasympathetic state, that reverses quickly. And now all of these important functions can go on. But when it's chronic, we don't get adequate rest and digest. We have a decreased immune system and function. 
We may get pain, tightness, and soreness in our joints. It can affect our skin, our hair, and our nails. It can affect our appetite, our weight, digestion again. It increases risks of infertility, insulin resistance, and chronic diseases. It alters our mood, behaviors, our sleep, right? We may get insomnia, anxiety. Um, it also increases the risk for heart disease, diabetes, obesity. Essentially, our nervous system is in dysregulation. And when this becomes our norm, when this becomes our state of being, that is when all of these health conditions come up. And again, as you can see, this affects the entire body. So it can be eczema, it can be autoimmune conditions, it can be digestive issues, IBS, it can be infertility, it can be weight gain, it can show up in all sorts of different ways. So now let's talk about hormones. We made that connection there to stress. And so stress mediators include and are not in, limited to adrenaline or epinephrine. So this is like that big adrenaline rush that you may get when you're, again, skydiving, but that's only for a short amount of time. Or again, when the tiger is coming out of the bush. Um, there's catecholamines, dopamine, corticotrophin releasing hormone, vasopressin, steroid hormones, cortisol, testosterone, estrogen, etc., insulin, ghrelin, leptin. These are just some of them. There are more. And the endocrine system as a whole works as a team. So all of our hormone producing organs communicate with each other and balance each other. This endocrine system is a finely tuned machine, essentially. So some of these organs are the brain. There's the pituitary gland, the pineal gland, the hypothalamus, the thyroid gland, the pancreas, the adrenal glands, our sex glands, parathyroid glands, our thymus, our gut flora. That's one that you may not be familiar with and a really key part in our hormone regulation. Um, we'll go into depth in that in a moment. And so all these endocrine organs and others work together as a magnificent orchestra, a complex symphony of hormone production and regulation. And this is largely from the work of Dr. K uh, Natasha Campbell McBride, gut and physiology syndrome, um, as well as, again, the medical um, student well-being book that I mentioned before. So let's talk about hormones some more. What are they made of? They're made of fat and protein by the endocrine glands. And so one thing that's important to note is that we're going to talk about this with the gut a little bit. If you're not getting adequate fat intake and protein intake, you're not going to be able to produce these hormones. Cholesterol is the precursor for the sex hormones and vital for corticosteroids. And these are the hormones that help us deal with stress and protect the body against disease. So again, these are literally the building blocks of these hormones that are here to support our body, that are here to help us heal, that are here to protect us. And so we need to be intaking adequate fat, protein, and cholesterol, which um, I would say that mainstream nutrition, especially in the past, has villainized these ingredients, especially fat and cholesterol. However, they're vital for radiant health and for health in general. Um, and so again, the hormone balance is a finely tuned system. It's very delicate and sensitive. It's constantly adjusting itself to what is going on in the body and to changes in the environment. Even if one hormone changes, the rest of the system has to change to keep balance. So think about it. If your body is constantly under stress, constantly your hormones are imbalanced because there's more stress hormones being produced and kind of alive in your body at that time. So all of a sudden, all of your efforts are going into creating stress hormones, and maybe they're not there just to create the thyroid hormones or others, et cetera. So this is where we see these chronic conditions. We see adrenal fatigue, we see thyroid conditions, we see diabetes, um, polycystic ovarian syndrome, Cushing's disease, Graves' disease, Hashimoto's, et cetera. This is all connected. And so can you see that connection between stress and your hormones and why it's so important to regulate our nervous systems regularly? So the next piece is our gut. So it's our gastro gastrointestinal system or digestive system. And in this, we have a gut microbiome. It's an ecosystem of bacteria, viruses, yeasts, fungi, and other microbes that maintain balance and homeostasis for nutrition, digestion, absorption of nutrition. They actually produce nutrition um, and hormones, immune function, again, hormone secretion, and they affect all aspects of our physical health and mind. So just like I mentioned on the slide or two before, our gut flora, our gut microbiome is actually part of the endocrine system is what 
researchers are now really um, acknowledging because our microbes, they play a part in our body function. So let's say our body needs um, a certain hormone, it actually signals into the gut and there are certain microbes that actually create it. They actually produce it and they secrete it and they bring it to the place where it needs to be brought. So it is part of the endocrine system. And again, this is affected by stress, nutrition, immune system, our gut flora balance. And essentially when we don't have a balanced gut flora, what ends up happening is something called leaky gut can happen. And what this is, is there are tight junctions in our digestive tract. When there's leaky gut, there are toxins secreted by these, let's say opportunistic microbes or microbes that aren't necessarily the best for our health. They are all beneficial to a certain extent in certain amounts when things are balanced, everything works perfectly and we don't ever wanna to eradicate something totally. However, we want it to stay in balance. And so when there's an imbalance in our gut flora, they produce toxins. So candida is one, clostridia, there's tons of others. So when these microbes create toxins, it actually irritates our gut wall and it creates um, spaces in those tight junctions, things that should be tight junctions. So now, one, it actually damages our enterocytes in our small intestine, all of these other things happen, which we won't go in depth right now. But what it does is it impairs the body's ability, our gut's ability to absorb nutrients, to utilize them, to digest them properly. Now we have these spaces. So we're getting undigested food that's now being able to go through that gut wall into our bloodstream. It creates inflammation. It creates food allergies, food sensitivities, food intolerances. So this leaky gut is a huge part of chronic inflammation, chronic disease, and something that is so important to make sure that we're supporting and working towards improving. And so again, when the gut floor is imbalanced, everything changes in the body. It can affect systemically, it can affect your skin, it can affect your digestion, it can even affect your mental health, your mental clarity, your emotional health. You may be really emotionally like Leba, where you're, where you're you know, really emotional. All of this happens in the gut. And so I hope I've made this connection between our stress and our hormones and our gut clear because when there's stress, this affects the gut flora. It actually changes the microbiome and therefore it changes the balance, which again, changes everything in return. When we have stress, it changes our hormones, what hormones are being active and how our body responds to it as well. So Thank you so much for staying with me during this presentation. And as a thank you, I do want to offer my free mini course. And so this mini course, and you also get a cheat sheet with it as well, is based on the Radiant Gut Health Framework. And it goes over the four secrets to radiant health, wellness, and vitality without wasting time, money, and supplements on diets and protocol. Because as you just experienced at the beginning, it only takes a few minutes of nervous system regulation to reset your whole body so that now you can receive healing that your body can get into that rest and digest state. So this is the link for that free protocol um, and free mini course. Again, it goes in depth into the parts of the Radiant Health Protocol. And I'm happy to answer any questions and I have plenty of resources to offer as well. And as always, I wish you and your loved ones all the best and I hope to see you soon.